Hi guys, tonight we're taking a look at the Kaleen CP40. It's their new preamp for acoustic guitars. And you can find more information at kaleentechnology.com. You can also find them on their website, or sorry, on their Facebook page at uh, Kaleen Technology. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got here. It's a pretty straight up DI box. Now, if you've never heard of uh, DI boxes before, or uh, direct boxes is another way that, uh, that they're called, Basically what they do is they take your uh, quarter inch, so just like a regular quarter inch jack that you would normally plug into a guitar, and then it converts it into an XLR signal. Now the XLRs are what you see on the microphones, they're those, uh, those three pronger guys, and that goes into your mixing console, or in my case here, it goes into your, uh, into, into your audio I.O. box that goes into your laptop. Now what that does is it uh, allows a little bit more grounding. Um, that means so a little less buzzing going on. A um, little bit more control over on the mixing console as well because it's a better signal going in there. So lots of people use direct boxes. And the nice thing about them is that uh, we now can have some added controls as acoustic guitar players. In the case of the CP40, we've got uh, quite a bit of control. Um, so let's walk through it right now. So ver the very first control you've got up top here is the input control. So that just allows um, as much signal coming out of the guitar into the box itself and eventually out to the mixing board or whatever. Then you've got your basic controls for treble and uh, sorry for bass and treble here. So boosting and cutting as you would prefer. Then we have uh, an interesting control here called the anti feedback. Now the anti feedback control sometimes is also known as a notch filter. And you might see them on the actual uh, controls of the guitars themselves. What that does is it actually takes uh, a section of the frequencies that you're, uh, that you're playing. Anytime that you're playing the, the instrument, there's a certain range, a certain frequency range that's normally being played. Now what happens sometimes is that range can get a little bit overloaded and that can cause feedback. So what the uh, anti-feedback or the notch filter does, it's, it's literally grabbing a section of that frequency, uh, however many hertz it is, the, the distance between them, and by moving the dial, you know, left or right, sorry, clockwise or counterclockwise, you're going to be notching, literally putting a divot in that frequency selection there. And what that does is that helps to prevent the uh, the feedback because it's only ever a couple of frequencies or a frequency range that causes the feedback in the first place. So now obviously I'm correct I'm connected directly so I'm not going to get any feedback, hopefully. <laughs> but this little anti feedback is a very very handy tool, and you basically just turn it on, and you can leave it on. Now you can hear a difference when you swoop through it. Here, I'll just put everything at twelve o'clock. You can hear the change in the tone, and that's done on purpose. Okay, so what that does, again, is it's, it's carving a little notch in the frequency that's causing the problem. So every guitar is going to be a little different. Your acoustic guitar is going to be different than mine, but the nice thing is, is you can tailor it to what whatever's causing the problem hit that anti-feedback and then just leave it on it's uh, a very handy tool to have trust me you don't want feedback all right so i'm going to turn that off for now and so outside of that you have your basic bass and treble controls which actually have a lot of really good range here so let's uh we'll keep everything at 12 and we'll move it up So you see the input clip going off there? So too much signals going into the box there, so it's going to let you know when it's distorting.
I'm just having too much fun here. So uh, let's crank the bass right up. So uh, we'll move it all the way maximum clockwise. So you can really get some. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm pushing it a little bit, so it makes sense that the uh, makes sense that the the clip would go off a little bit, but. So you get some pretty good, pretty big beef there. All right, so let's uh, let's cut it. So we'll bring it right out. So it's gone now. So that might come in handy if you got like a big jumbo acoustic like me that's already got a lot of bottom end. But I still like to add some more. All right, so. so bring it back up to 12 o'clock. Sorry, I have a very fussy uh, B string. All right, so. Let's um, mess around with the treble a little bit here. Now, one of the other things, one of the other things I didn't talk about was the uh, you've got inputs and outputs, and what's nice about that too. Again, that's usually standard on a lot of DI boxes. So the in is obviously your instrument, and the out is the signal coming, uh, or sorry, going out of the out of the pedal. And I've just got it basically connected into a tuner, which is nice. So even though it's going out to a board using the XLR, having that extra quarter inch uh, to plug it into various other things. Now you could also plug it into a um, another amplifier. So if you're using a sort of like a second monitor. Uh, that's a handy tool as well. But for right now, I've got it just plugged into my tuner, which is very, very handy. Especially with acoustic guitars that are fussy. All right, so yes, yeah, so let's take a look at the treble. Crank it up. Well, let's go three quarters. So the brightness starting to come out there. Let's see how much treble we got. So it actually brings the definition out nice, eh? Is it all the way? No, it is. Cool. All right, so again, let's uh, go the other way. So back at 12 o'clock. Right down. <laughs> Where did I go, hey? Eh? All right, so let's put everything back at 12 o'clock. Here we go. Good. All right, so I gotta give it a little more treble there. All right, so the last switch that we have yet to talk about is the treble boost. It's actually an EQ EQ boost, so it's gonna take your uh, your current uh, treble and bass, and it's gonna add just a little more punch, which is really nice. So let's try that again. So that's on, and I'll take it off. So a lot more lively, a lot more warmth right there. I may leave that on. <laughs> Just a little more bass here. Yeah, it's got some nice big bottom end there.
nice okay so uh the rest of it will work just the same as before so the more bass and treble obviously the more bass and treble you're going to get very handy now this thing is powered strictly by a uh a power supply there isn't a 9-volt uh, package in there or a 9-volt uh, cavity in there to put in there, so which actually kind of makes sense when you're going direct. You want to make sure that you're always sending power to it. You don't want to be halfway through a live gig and the 9-volt go out, so that would not be palatable. All right, so great direct box. It sounds fantastic. I like the simplicity of it. There isn't a whole lot of bells and whistles. You basically you can cut feedback and you can boost. Uh, you can adjust your inputs and your treble and bass. Um, I mean, what really, what could you possibly want more in a direct box? Sounds great. And uh, so go check it out. You can find, again, more information at uh, Kaleen Technology on Facebook. And you can also find them. Did I get that website there? You can also find them at KayleenMusic.com. And that was the CP40. All right. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll talk to you soon. Have a great night. Mm -hmm.